Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It is the Boss Rush After Dark alternative podcast for the Boss Rush Network. Uh, I am back, your host, Laurent Dawkins, and of course, my my friends, my compatriots, my my cohorts, my my confidants, uh, my I don't know, like my, my lifeline sometimes. <laughs> Stephanie Klimov and Corey Derrick are back. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey. Hello. I know it's I sound. Going. I, uh, I, I, yeah, it's going. I know I sound a little different tonight. Like, I mean, you know, I'm I'm coming I'm coming down from what I can only describe as extreme exhaustion. How about you guys? Yeah. Yes, exactly that. Like, I'm just constantly like I feel like I'm burning the candle at both ends, and it's just like I'm crawling at the finish line, but someone keeps dragging the finish line farther away from me. <laughs> you still have a candle that you're burning. That's that's nice. It's <laughs> cute. That's cute. Yeah. <laughs> Oh God, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, it, I, I don't know what's. I don't know what's been going on with me lately. I just, I've, I've just been tired, and I'm trying yeah. to figure out. I'm trying to figure out is the change in seasons because, like, it's officially spring here in Virginia now. Like, like we haven't had a day where it's in like the 40 degrees, like you know, since since last Thursday. You know, like it's been 80 degree weather here and stuff like that. And I'm not sure if my body's just like you know what the hell. You know, like it's the jet lag of that. You know, because. There, there have been some days where it's just, it's just, if I, if I haven't struggled to get out of bed in the morning, it's a, it, it's a struggle to stay awake, you know, by like two in the afternoon, you know, stuff like that. And God. Hey, know. you know, we all come up with possible reasons. I mean, this is obviously me making it a joke, but people are, uh, people have been telling me that Mercury is or will be in retrograde. Who the fuck knows? I still, I still can't decipher that. Like, and you know, like I'm not the best with like astrology and horoscopes and stuff like that. I, I know the tendencies of of, like what a Gemini does, you know, but, but that's about it, you know? (laughs) Yeah, no, I don't know either. It's just that when people say it, apparently like it's a wonky time whenever it goes retrograde. I'm like, okay, sure. (laughs) My life, my entire life is Mercury Mercury retrograde. So please. Oh God, don't mm-hmm. say that. Don't say that. It can't be. It can't be that bad. Come on, come on. It's got to be like lollipops and, and puppy dogs every now and then. <laughs> you let me know when. <laughs> Did I miss it? I miss the puppies. I'm 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 hope I'm I'm a hopeless optimist. Come on, like I I, I need I, I need some of that good energy to make to make it not so bad for me. Come on, guys. Mm-hmm. You send is, us some of that positive vibes, please. <laughs> my my uh, my my friends and my boyfriend say this a, a, a lot. Like like I have so much optimism that you know, like it stunts me from seeing what the hell is really going on around me. And you know what? I'm starting to believe it now. I, Sounds you know, it's, awesome. Yeah, it's yeah, it's 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 bad. For example, for example, like you know, like um, like like something something somebody told me recently. You know, has has honestly. I don't want to say it's been keeping me awake at night, but um, but I was I was recently told I was recently told by somebody, and you know, after after further after further reflection, I know I know they're getting to the point, like you know, like they're 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 stating an obvious point. Um, in the business world, like black people have to hold themselves to a certain level to be taken seriously and be more successful and stuff like that. And um, and it was pointed out to me that I could definitely be doing a little bit more. And it wasn't and it wasn't being told to me in like in like a bad way or not even in a in a, in a racist way or whatnot. It was being told to me in like in a way that was like, hey, like this is probably the reason why you aren't as successful as you think you are, you know, and and like that. And you know, it's something that you know I I've, I've been unpacking for like a couple of weeks since being told mm. that because I you know like I. I grew up in I grew up in a decent lifestyle. Like, I mean, like you know, like I grew up uh, I grew up in a military family and stuff like that. You know, so like you know, like I I don't know what living in inner cities are like. You know, I don't I don't I don't you know like I've never been like outwardly like you know like had like racism you know hit me. Yeah, r- racist things have happened to me, but I have it's never been outwardly like so like it's always been the veiled racism stuff like that. You know, you know what I mean? It's yeah. not the, it's not the stuff that we see on on television and, and you know in the news and stuff like that. You know, it's it's always the veiled stuff. You know. Um, so yeah, so I don't know, I guess what was it? What's it? What's it? How's a song called semi charmed life? I think mm-hmm. that's, I think that's what I grew up in. And, you know, it's kind of like a, it's, it's kind of like a very harsh, like, like 
ice water to the face, you know, for somebody that I'm turning 47 next month, you know, and I think I've been running around in life, you know, like, uh, yeah, I've been racially profiled by police before, you know, it, it's it's happened, you know, stuff like that. But it hasn't happened to the point where it affects me to, to the point where, you know, I've been like unjustly incarcerated and things like that. And so, you know, like, I guess I just run around like, you know, like I, I run around like with this with this Teflon suit on, you know, or like where I think stuff is not sticking to me and stuff like that. And, you know, like I have friends like like like, you know, black friends that are like they're like, you need to stop doing that. You're going to get seriously in trouble. Yeah. So yeah. So, it, it, so yeah. Like it, it all goes to like I don't know that, that optimism and stuff like that. I always, I always feel like the grass is, you know, like the grass is always going to be greener on the other side and things like that. Because you know, like if I get stuck in that muck of like everything shit, like I'm, I'm going to be a different person. <laughs> well, yeah. It's um, I I I was like that. Um, my friends would best describe me more as an idealist, but you know, I. I personally, that's like similar-ish. Optimist, idealist is um, a, a young kid and a teen. But I hate to say it, nowadays, I don't know, light, life is just kind of just beat I, it out of me. I, but, I know, yeah. But I, tr- I still strive, right? I fail a lot, but I strive to be the optimist that I once was because it's it's the way you described it too, Lauren. It's like, if I don't it's almost kind of like what do i have to live for right yeah exactly and and and, and you and, and Corey and and you y'all have kids and stuff y'all have something else like you know like you gotta i know you guys have to put on this face you know like to you know so it doesn't affect your family as well yeah i hate to say it but you know i i have told like my therapist and a, a few confidants that if it weren't for my son i don't know if i'd still be here Mm, mm, yeah so but anyway yeah yeah it's wild it's wild Corey, you've been quiet yeah i mean i'm just it's not like i i I just i've been trying to like i've just been in a funk the last Mm -hmm. i don't know like month or so and it's not like anything is wrong right like i mean i have a great job like i i enjoy going to work i love my job i have a great family i have great friends that i get to you know hang out with every night and stuff i just i i don't i don't know i've been like overthinking a lot of things lately and like my <clears throat> my dad was admitted to the hospital yesterday and like you know he's he's okay he came home today but it was it was a scare and like my cousin is really sick and you know i I think i think for some reason i've been thinking a lot about mortality and Mm. things are going to start you know i mean you know i'm really thinking about like oh when my parents aren't going to be here or you know my family or people I know are just going to be gone someday and I've been thinking a lot about that and like trying to do the best that I can for my family has been I've been anxious about that I don't know I've just had a lot of anxiety about things that I can't really control if that makes sense yeah oh yeah and you know, if it's, like, one thing, I can usually blow it off if it's another thing. Plus, like, the stuff that we're doing with, with Boss Rush and, like, trying to keep up with the Patreon and the content has been a lot more a lot more work than I expected, I think. Uh, and I don't know. Just a combination of all these things has given me a lot of anxiety to the point where like I'm not enjoying things that I should be enjoying or just living life because I'm worried about this or I'm trying to get this done or I'm trying to do this for this person or I'm trying to you know and it's I've been really struggling with it lately and I don't know and and I don't want to make it sound like I have like a terrible life. I don't I have a great life and that's why I'm so confused at why I'm so anxious and down lately. 
you know. Well, can I just say it bothers me where we are at a point where we have to kind of preface or have a disclaimer of how we feel like I recognize that, you know, I, I have it pretty good or my, my mm-hmm. life is blessed and fine. I don't know. I, Cause I've had that too, where people just be like, y- your life is a cakewalk. So shut up. People have it worse. Mm-hmm. I feel like we need to create an environment where it's okay for us to kind of offload mm-hmm. how we feel because I think mm-hmm. 90% of us, we know that, it could be worse or there are worse situations yeah, out there. Yeah. But I feel, I honestly feel like we all have a right to feel the way we do. And if you feel overwhelmed, it's just as legitimate as anyone else's feeling of being overwhelmed. Yeah. That's, and another side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a word too, is overwhelmed. I feel overwhelmed with a lot of things too. Well, us humans, we're really not built and meant to multitask yet. The society and culture we create today is we're always multitasking. We have to multitask. Do so many things, and I feel like it really fucks us up in the head a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, you know, I I mean, what you said, the fact that we have to, you know, preface things of like, oh, you know, life's not bad or whatever. Like, that's why I always refrain from saying how I feel about things sometimes is I'm like, okay, well, I don't want to be that guy because I know technically it's not that bad and you can push through it and, you know, somebody has it worse. Like, that's why I never say anything. And it took a really long time for me to start saying that, you know, and, and um, you know, my, my wife finally, like, kind of got me to do it and I still have trouble doing it, <laughs> you know? It's just, I don't know. I'm just, I'm struggling a little bit, but... I just kind of keep telling myself it's okay. It'll be, it's not going to last forever, but. Are there any immediate light at the end of the tunnel things that you can kind of cling to, or is it, do you feel like things are going to kind of be the same unless you do something? I mean, see, I don't, I don't know. I mean, there are things that I'm worried about that I can control like this stuff and work and, you know, but then there's stuff that I can't control, like my parents being 70 and getting older or my cousin having cancer. And, you know, we don't know what's going to happen there. And, you know, all these other things that I can't control that I still think about. Or like, I don't know, yesterday I had a really terrible bout of anxiety about vacation. And what if we have a balcony when we go on vacation and my child falls off the balcony? For no reason, right? Like, I think about those things constantly. And it's like, why am I thinking about that? She's at home, probably sitting on the floor, probably smearing peanut butter on the wall or something stupid, you know? And I don't know. I'm, I'm just thinking about all these weird things. Like today, okay, here's a perfect example, too. <laughs> on the way home today, I was I panicked because I thought about the episode of Mad Men where the lawnmower runs over the guy's foot. Oh. And I had this really terrible panic like panic moment of about lawnmowers. And I was like, why am I thinking about that? I'm you know, driving home from work after I just did all this stuff for work and I'm thinking about this scene from a show from like 10 years ago. <laughs> You know, it's funny. It's funny you say something like that because, um, because like, um, because like, I every every so often, I wind up, I wind up when when I'm driving, I wind up getting in this, getting into this headspace, to where like, to where like something's going to happen, mm-hmm. and it's not even going to be a car accident. Something's going to happen to the point where I get hit by a car. Like say, like say, like I'm in a full stop and I get out of my car and I just get hit by a car and not. And I didn't hit by a car, like, but hit and crushed. Like, I can actually, like, there's something in my brain that I can visually see it. And it's so, it's so weird. It's so random. It's so irrational. And, you know, it's like, where does this come from? Like, I could be in an empty parking lot and I will get out, I will, I will, I will be in the car and I'm like, uh, you know, all of a sudden I'll just have this flash of getting hit by a vehicle. Hmm. I also feel, I mean, not that this is grounded in any confirmed science, but I feel like if we are already at a heightened state of anxiety or just if we're already on the edge, 
Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, everything else just seems so. How do I say it? Like just easily irritable, so to speak. Yeah, like, it, it, the, it gets amplified. The way I, I can make an analogy is unfortunately because maybe I'm in the me- the medical field. Like, if you already have an irritated, either mosquito bite or or rash reaction or something, um, you know your body is you know, flooding cytokines and all these like little chemicals that makes everything just more swollen, red, tender. That's what she said. But, but, you know, basically it's just your body is trying to deal with, with healing itself from your current anxiety or thing that's bothering you. And I feel like other things can be easily inflamed in the process. Um, I know for me, I have OCD. My OCD is at its worst when I am, going through if I'm worrying about something because once I'm really anxious about something I start freaking worrying about everything else like did I leave the stove on at home while I'm out and I'm thinking that my house is burning down even though like the odds of that are very slim and whatever it's just like your mind goes to just some crazy places yeah yeah I I think about that too all the time and like I know my it's easier for me not to think about that now because my wife is home and she'll she always checks that stuff too but like when they're out <clears throat> when they're out and i leave like did i leave the garage door open did i leave my front door unlocked did i leave the toaster plugged in like is is just you know it's it's it sucks thinking about all these things mhm i I don't know. I I just like I need a, like a a break or a vacation or just like a you know. <laughs> uh, and and like I know like I've I've felt it for a while. Even when we're doing shows and stuff, I have to like I have to like hype myself up even though I know I enjoy doing the podcast. Like I love it. Like I look forward to every Wednesday and every Monday and every Thursday and whenever else we're recording, right? Like I just, the last month or so I've had to like put on a face and get into character and be excited about things that like, I don't know, maybe I'm not excited about video games right now. And like, which to be honest, I'm not excited about video games right now. Like I... I've I've been playing them, but like I'm not excited for anything. I'm still waiting for that next thing. Or like I've been wanting to watch finish up Moon Knight, right? And I just like okay, well, like I'm not as into that series as everybody else, but like I should probably watch it because people are watching it. But like, am I really paying attention when I'm watching it? No, you know, like I I'm it's to the point where I'm struggling to pay attention to the things that I want to do. And that I don't want to do things that I used to love doing. You know? Well, it's it, definitely a big indicator of you needing to take some sort of a break. Yeah. yeah. Um, Easier said than done, right? It is, especially with, like, you know, we're we're trying to build a business out of this, you know? I mean... I'm, I know we would do this for free, but like we're we're trying to build a business and come up with a business plan and building a business takes a lot of work, you know, especially when you don't really know what you're doing like me. And maybe I have a lot of anxiety about that, too. And like it's, you know, I, I, I maybe I do need a break, but I, I just I don't know. I have I, it's like this big weight that I'm. I feel like I'm carrying it. I know I don't have to, but I still seem to be carrying it. You know? I, I don't know. I just, I'm, <laughs> I'm just really struggling lately, and I don't really know how else to say it without rambling. <laughs> well, I tell you what, before we, before we like get into like how we're going to, how we try to deal with some of this anxiety and all this stuff, uh, do us a favor real quick and shout out our patrons for the, uh, for the episode. Yeah. Patreon. Remember, if you're a page, if you're a patron of the Boss Rush Network, wow, which is probably somebody was like, "Oh my gosh, what's wrong with you?" Uh, <laughs> so, Boss Rush Network has a Patreon. 
Remember, all of our content is free, but if you would like After Dark two weeks early, Standard Definition two weeks early, or one week early access to the Boss Rush podcast and Nintendo Power Block Expansion Pass, you can do it for $1. But if you want to be a Patreon producer here on the Boss Rush Network, where we shout out your name on an episode of the podcast, as long as you're a $5 patron, you can do that. $5 producer tier. So producers for this episode are Quentin Jackson, Rebecca Jewell, Adriel Munger, and my wife, Sana Dierig. Thank you to our $5 Yay. patrons. We really appreciate you. We appreciate all of our listeners. Really. Thank you for making Truly. these shows possible. Yep. Yep. So just remember, patreon.com slash boss rush network. Like you get all the details about being a patron. Yeah. But that's see, I mean, I just did it there, right? Or like, I have to, like, I feel like I have to be like in character recently. Where like, not that it, like, I feel like I have to get into a character to be on the shows, and I don't want to do that. I want to be natural and yeah, whatever, you know. And it yeah, just it's kind of funny. I just um, I thought of it as a potential topic for for boss rush or it could be for after dark at some point is if we have a podcast personality or a content creation personality mm-hmm. if that makes sense but anyway yeah. oh yeah i mean yeah i definitely do you know i definitely do you know i feel like i'm actually pretty boring outside of the podcast i mean maybe people think i'm boring on the podcast too i don't know god you should, <laughs> god you should see this guy on on pal block mm. mm. me mm. Yeah, he's a different he's a different person when he's on Boss Rush. How would you know? You don't listen. I was on Monday night. What are you talking about? Oh, I was yeah, in y'all's true. I was I was in y'all's DMs Monday night. It's true. It's fair. There, there is a, a another level of Corey energy on Monday nights, that's for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Somebody's gotta keep up with Ed. Mm. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. I I can only just say that I can relate in certain ways where like s- certain passion for things, you know, I they 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 it's like a roller coaster, right? Like right now I'm really not into gaming. I mean, well, I mean, I am from a distance, but not like into it in current. Like I have like mm-hmm. last 2 weeks I have literally nothing to report on what I've been playing. I know I'll eventually get super into it again, but just that my plate is so unbelievably fucking full that i just am bursting at the seams Mm -hmm. isn't it isn't it crazy uh you know uh, i was mentioning to my roommate tonight like uh like because um one of the places i feel like i don't like trimming content from crossroads for example but i feel like i feel like we got rid of playstation which basically was our our version of nintendo because it was taking up a lot it was taking up a lot of airtime Mm -hmm. um you know um and now it seems like what are we playing is now like the the big the the elephant in the room now because I mean because I told my I told my roommates I don't really have a problem with that portion of the show the problem is is like how do people find time to play seven fucking games in a week and I can I barely play Monster Hunter the game I love I know I see I see people like posting their like lists of games that they've beaten this year oh this is game number nineteen finished for the year I'm like I haven't beaten one fucking game I, yet I this finished. Year. I finished Guardians of the Galaxy this year. That's the only game I've beaten this year. And I'm like, it took me like four months to beat that game. I haven't beaten one fucking game this year. Not one. And I don't know if I'm going to beat one game yeah. <laughs> this year. And, and we know if we force it on ourselves, it's not going to be fun. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, it's not, even, it's not even that I'm not having fun, you know, playing video games. I have fun playing video games. Like, like you heard me earlier tonight. I I, I, I hacked the fuck out of my Vita and my DS over the weekend. You know, yeah, awesome. I've been playing yeah. I've been playing games. I just haven't been playing anything, anything quality, if that makes sense. You know? Yeah. Like, you, plus, like, like, uh, like, plus, like, if I feel like if I keep talking about the same game, it's not interesting after like two weeks, you know? Yeah, that right. yeah, that too. That's too. And, I, and that's what. That's why on Boss Rush, I didn't say what I was playing. Like, I, I don't know if you guys noticed that or not, but I just totally skipped over. Yeah, yeah, no, I, no, no, we saw that. I just, I've been playing Super Mario 3D World, and I'm trying to collect all the green stars, and that's, like, my game right now. But I've been talking about it for almost six weeks at this point, 
And I'm like, well, you know, and like I fell off Xenoblade Chronicles. Uh, I just, I'm just not in the mood. But this last week, like I've been looking for like comfort in games when I'm playing them, right? Oh, so, here's so I. Oh, here's something. What? Uh, Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase, June twelfth. Yeah, we knew that. That was announced oh, like a oh, week we ago. Oh, we did. Okay. It's already the wrong. I didn't know that. Thank you. I, yeah, no. I didn't know that either. There's an article on BossRush.net, guys. Well, <laughs> I'll, you know, I'll take your word for it. The, I, Actually, I really don't know if like, there is or not. Looks looks like looks looks like I looks like I'm about to get slapped in the in, into the penalty box for bad behavior. Mm. Uh, but I, I check I, out the I check out the website at least at least once a day at least. I don't. I'm not gonna lie. I'm sorry. See, that, that's that's another one of those things. So I took a, a brief hiatus from the the writing team again for my novel. Like my novel is, I mean, and I, keep in mind, I don't write every day because every night I have something and with the kid and whatever. Mm-hmm. So and I feel bad because I I was really kind of you know chugging along with the website. I'm like really into it. Now I'm almost kind of concerned, like. Is it going to be difficult for me to like get back into it like I mm-hmm. once was? I mean, Don't worry, David Lasby, I, I'm not leaving, but I'm just saying. <laughs> like, I, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, it's the same way with me. Like, I was doing a whole bunch of news and stuff for the website, and then when I got this new job or whatever, I was like, I've been so over, well, like not overwhelmed. I guess like just working a lot more and really focusing on nailing this new job because it's a big deal to me right and like getting these podcasts and stuff done uh for me the podcasts are the priority like it's it's i know some people don't like it when i say that but the podcasts are are the priority and for patreon and for the content we put out that is you know for me that's the priority and so Mm -hmm. i've had to pick and choose what i do and sadly, the writing had to get cut for me. Not that I'm not going to return when I find time. It's just like I'm not going to be writing yeah. 60 new stories. You know, it's just going to be. You can't win first place for writing most articles every month, Corey. I Gosh, know. I used to hold that title. I know. Sorry. Uh, but, you know, and that's the other thing, too, is like I'm really I'm actually really anxious about the website because of like fair use stuff. It still scares me because of the images we use aren't our images or we don't have, you know, and I know. Dave yeah, we don't, we don't have a bang up. But yeah, we don't have a bang up art team. <laughs> and it's still like, it just, I don't know. I, I just, again, I think, start thinking about it and I get super anxious about it to the point where like, I just don't look at it, you know? And man, I don't know. Now that now that we're talking about a whole bunch of other stuff, now I have a whole new thing. No, no, no. no. We're gonna about. we're gonna you know guide you, Corey, to you know this is what I've been thinking, asking mm-hmm. like, what have you been trying to do to cope with the anxiety? Not that you have time to do things to cope, but like I, other than just trying to push through it. I I haven't. I'm just like, you know. So actually, the one thing I do do and this is going to sound really silly and stupid but like when it's silent is when I'm the most anxious I have to have something on in the background or you know and so what I've been doing is like I can't even like I can't even sleep in my bed and like right now because of how anxious and stuff I get at night like I'll wake up in the middle of the night like sit up and I like I don't want to scare like my son or my wife and like I've been sleeping on the couch because of this Mm -hmm. like it's so it's it's getting to that point where like I can't I won't go to bed at night I'll just sleep out on the couch but what I've been doing to kind of like calm nerves or anxiety or whatever is I've been putting uh, Disney World park walkthroughs on and just listening to the crowd noise and the music and the sounds of the theme parks because like 
when I'm there is the one time that I'm not anxious about anything. You know? And I know that's really kind of silly to say at 35 years old, but, like, when I'm... Not at all. I mean, that's that's the equivalent of a white noise machine. Yeah. Like, how is that any different? Except you have a very positive correlation Mm -hmm. to, like, the Disney Park sounds. Mm -hmm. And so, like... It just like I kind of like lay there and close my eyes on the couch and think about all the fun and all the you know how happy that place makes me because it really does and like when I think about taking my daughter there this year for her first trip is like like I'm already planning it it's not even until November you know uh, partially because Disney makes you plan everything six months in advance but. Um, they really do. I I tomorrow I have to make park reservations for November. I have wow. to say like wow. Not only do I have to buy our tickets, well, we're buying our tickets, but when you buy tickets, you then have to make a park reservation on that ticket. So you have to tell Disney what days you're going to which parks. So That is a lot. That's a lot of micromanaging. <laughs> it is. Uh but you know how wait how's that not stressing you out it, shit it, it, i mean it, it, i feel like i, I feel it, like i, I feel, go, ahead, go ahead it is but it isn't because we've been so many times that i know everything there like you could blindfold me and i could probably navigate the parks like that's how much i know those my, places my guy like i'm the person that when i when i have to fly somewhere like I usually don't sleep the night before because I am always afraid I'm either gonna sleep past the time that I need to be 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 uh-huh. up, or oh, I'm yeah. going to, or I spend that whole night. The main reason why I spend that whole night up is because I I need to make sure I've packed everything I need. Yeah, that's that's also a it, new that's also a new new fear I've developed within the last five years is flying. Like I wait, used to fly all the time. When I, I don't was li- I don't have a fear of flying. I have a fear of fucking up the flight. No, I I'm I'm saying for me like a new fear of mine in the last five years is flying for some reason. Oh God. Yeah. I never used to have a fear of flying. And then all of a sudden now, like I, I get physical noticeable anxiety Mm -hmm. leading up to it. Um, My, my whole, the only thing I can say I have a fear of flying right now is because of the bullshit they did behind the fucking, uh, the fucking mask mandate with that because uh-huh. um because i was used to i was used to seeing people fighting you know like throwing punches and shit because like they had to wear a mask now i'm sitting like you know what if i am i going to be attacked by somebody if i choose to keep wearing my mask because you know because you know what motherfuckers you know mother, they're, they're fucking snowflakes you know and it doesn't matter which way it goes like you know like oh we're a snowflake if we want to be woke but y'all are snowflakes because y'all follow a big fucking lie you know and stuff like that you know yeah. so so you know who's the so you know in my opinion who's the who's the worst off snowflake? <laughs> well, and know? and sorry to like build off of that, but honestly, I would be more okay with it if people learned hygiene. You would think after this entire pandemic, we would now be more educated, even though washing hands really isn't anything new. Like this would improve. People are still the same disgusting fucking. Yeah. Yeah. And it's because of like, see, this is why we keep spreading this motherfucking virus over and over yeah, again. That's why, that's why it's like, lesson. that's why it's almost like this eighth iteration. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry, so yeah, but um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, these are yeah, these are the same people. These are the same people that 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 didn't even want to like hug somebody that that's HIV positive, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, I and like <laughs> earlier we were like on the Bossers podcast, we were answered that question about uh, Shane's friend in their the house burning down, and like. I uh, that that his friend is gonna have some long term kind of like oh some PTSD yeah, oh my god like mm-hmm. yeah. because because when my apartment oh. burned down like I still like uh, when I'm if I if the if something is in the toaster and I'm not in the same room and I smell it I will get anxiety mm-hmm. it's that bad and like I thought I was over it and then certain days I'll smell it and I will it, just like it just comes right back to you again. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I, man, I just, <clears throat> I don't know how to fix any of this. I, 
you know, I, I read I read something in, interesting. Like like trauma actually affects our, our very DNA. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I read that. And, and, you know, when I read the science behind it, I was like, you know what? It does make sense because, like, everything that that's done to our bodies physically, you know, like, you know, like, you know, like messes with our DNA structure. Mm-hmm. So why wouldn't emotional stuff also like mess with it? You know, like, you know, like our DNA is basically who we are and stuff like that, you know? So mm-hmm. like, yeah, like, it's so like, yeah, like, for example, like, you know, like you have like, like your favorite pet in the world, you know, you saw it get hit by a car or something, or you, or you had to witness it, like, like, you know, live its life and, you know, like die of some debilitating cancer and stuff like that what makes why why wouldn't that affect you on some 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 you know existential level you know mm-hmm. yeah, yeah things like- losing your home to a fire and then losing pets too like actual yeah. lives mm-hmm. that that's life altering and that'll stay with you i'll stay with you mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's it's uh it's 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 crazy like yeah. um you know the you know the crazy part is like I don't even know how I deal with my own anxiety and stress because I I feel like I live in a high I feel like my day to day is a high stress, and the crazy part is is that you know like if if you look at me if you look at me in my day to day life you will be like what's he so stressed about but that's the problem like I'm mm-hmm. stressed about stuff that I'm stressed about stuff that I don't that you know like I know in my brain I should not be all that stressed about you know because mm-hmm. I can only con- I can't control everything that happens to me I can I I can I can kind of like you know corral it and stuff like that but you know you can't control it so why do you stress can, out about it you know can I ask like you that. something Leron? Mm-hmm. and I I know that you were in a different kind of section of of the military but like did that training kind of like teach you how to like be more mentally stronger than than most people just because you know you know no not no not really because um because apparently uh, apparently uh you know it's uh, given that given that uh, may is uh, currently suicide awareness suicide awareness month and like a lot like a majority of like um like a big majority of the suicides are are happen to like veterans and and active duty servicemen and stuff like that Mm -hmm. um I'm gonna say I'm gonna say no because, in all honesty, like I'm, like, I joined the military at a time when the military was changing. It was supposed to be a kinder, gentler military, but they still didn't teach us how to deal with our fucking feelings. And in all honesty, they still don't. They still don't teach the servicemen and act, uh, you know, the active duty, the retired, the you know, the the discharged how to deal with it. You know, now, yeah. you know, um, I. I think I think I just have a good compartment, a good a good pension for compart com, for compartmentalizing that stuff mm-hmm. for compartmentalization. Yeah, I think I just have a better capacity for it. But the problem is, is that you know it's one of those things. You know, remember what was the movie? Oh, uh, recently I saw the movie Doctor Sleep. Good movie, by the way. Uh, you know, it's not so much a horror movie, but it's a suspense movie. Um, so you know, like, uh, so you know. But um, Ewan McGregor's in the movie, um, and um, and when he was and he's basically playing the grown-up version of the child from The Shining. And um, and the way he coped with that trauma was that he would find something. Well, he also had a power. It's called The Shining. That's what that's that's what the movie series is about. Uh, but whenever something, whenever he had was dealing with something that traumatized him or followed him, he would lock it away in a box in his mind. The only problem is, okay, so I do that. I compartmentalize stuff. I don't do it on that that level, you know what I mean? But, you know, I compartmentalize stuff, but at the same time, it's like you have all this stuff behind this door, and now it's banging on the door trying to get out. <laughs> and that's and that's how I feel sometimes, you know. It's, 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 it's insane, you know. And like I said, like – I, you know, I'm not, I, I don't live in a life, I don't live in a life of trauma. Like, like I said earlier, like I've been racially profiled, but it's never, it's never gotten to the point where like I've been physically harmed by people who are supposed to protect us. I've never been, I've never been outwardly like, you know, like been, been the victim of, of a racial attack or even, or even, a, or even a, a, you know, a hate crime or stuff like that. What hate crime, you know, because I'm black hate crime because, you know, I'm LGBT, you know, uh, you know, but at the same time, like I live with the fear that this shit can happen to me, you know, 
and it's and it's it's one of those things like you know how do you i i i'm asking how do you but because i really don't know what's the way to like live with it you know because oh here's another thing too like um like for the longest time, you know, like for the longest time, and and Corey, I know you're about you. You're gonna definitely empathize with this when I say it. As 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 a man, like one of the things is like you always gotta be strong. Like you know, you can't be you can't be emotional. Showing showing emotion is a sign of weakness and all this stuff. And for the longest for the longest fucking time in my life, like I'm 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 46 years old right now. For the longest fucking time in my life, you know, like I live by that. Don't let them see you sweat. You know, don't you know. Even if something like rattles you to your core, don't let nobody else know that happens because like they'll they'll weaponize it and they'll use it against you and stuff like that. And then, and then one day it was after it was after my last relationship, like like it was um like it was a breakup. I got dumped and everything, and within within minutes, within minutes, like that whole facade of like you know like be strong, don't be emotional, stuff like that. It just like it was destroyed and stuff like that and i noticed from that point on in this really in that relationship i it's been over four years since that day it's almost it's I, I can't keep my emotions in check anymore like i can't like if something if something's making me sad like you sh- you're gonna see a physical manifestation of me being sad if i'm if i'm angry like yeah like you're gonna see it and stuff like that i, c- I can't control my emotions anymore and i don't understand how i lost it's it's like it's like, how did I drop the leash on this dog and now it's running loose through the city? Mm-hmm. <laughs> just just tearing everything up in his wake, you know? How how'd that happen, you know? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. And the sad part and and the part is it scares me because like for for my entire life before that point, all I've known is that one thing, you know? And now it's like it's uncharted territory and and I'm closer to fifty than I am to fifteen now. Like i I feel like I should have been able to Known how to deal with this now. <laughs> yeah, I need therapy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I. <laughs> yeah, I. Actually, probably... actually, I need, actually I need some of that. That's on Stephanie's shirt. I need, <laughs> I need, a, I need some Jameson right now. <laughs> wow. Therapy's tough though, man, because I've been through a few, like either therapists or whatever. It's well, first of all, they're. I don't know if it's like high demand, low volume, but basically it's hard to find, um, you know, therapists that are taking new patients. There's the issue of insurance coverage. And then there's also finding the right therapist because, yeah, it, it, uh, it's a compatibility thing too. And what kind of therapy you need and making time for therapy and stuff like that. Um, I've been in therapy for for many, many years, um, since I got to college and I was out of my parents' hands. I love my parents, but they just don't believe in therapy. Um, so, I, you know, and I've kind of cycled through some. And there are times where I felt like I'm just bitching to this person about my day. Like, is this really helping me? Mm-hmm. So sometimes I do question if it's helpful. But, you know, overall, like, it, it's nice to, you know, have this safe space, so to speak especially after uh, my assault, that was kind of what really broke me as a person. Mm -hmm. Um, Certain things like I just, just real quick going back to like physical manifestations of traumas, like my memory, it has actually been impacted by that. Like I, I, my recall is, is dog shit. Oh, um, and, you know, it's hard to explain to people like, oh, you're a young spring chicken. What do you mean you can't remember what happened like a week ago? And I'm, I'm not going to tell every single person like, oh, well, you know, a couple of years ago I was sexually assaulted and now my brain just doesn't like it. Just it's like it, it does like it doesn't like holding on to shit. Yeah. It like it is unless it's like a thing I absolutely need to know. And it, I, mm-hmm. I repeat it 50 times. It goes in, and not not that I'm not listening at the time, but just yeah, yeah. you're right. Like it cannot hold on to something. And yeah, so yeah, I yeah. Just... Well, yeah, and that's a, that's the sad part is that's a that's a coping mechanism. Believe it or not, like you know, like you know, like like stuff that stuff that is major or life changing. Now you know, it's like you know, like it's like your brain is trying to like cope with that stuff to the point where like the minutia 
of the things that happen to you on a daily, you know, just just slip right by you. Yeah. So it's it's <sighs> it's incredible how our bodies, our mind, mm-hmm. tries to deal with what's being thrown at it. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, there isn't like a one size fits all on, on how to deal. You know. I, I would actually I would actually go through hy- hypnosis therapy if I if I believed it worked. <laughs> I don't. I don't really believe. I don't really have a belief that it works. Like, uh, not on the level that you know, like we see on like TV shows and movies and stuff. Like, where like people have been hypnotized and become like an absolutely different person. You know, I don't believe in that. But you know, but I also know that the power of suggestion is something that you know is is viable. You know, like it it's it ha- it can help people. But I think for some of the stuff that I have going on, like I need something a little bit more precise than that. You know, you know just. Just something to help me though is just, you know, like not, you know, like like for example, a typical a typical day for me, like usually like usually because the way my brain is, like I'm usually up by like six thirty, seven o'clock in the morning, you know. It doesn't mean I'm actually up on my feet, but usually means I'm right. I'm I've woken up and so like my day if we're not including like like podcast days, my day usually runs from about seven AM to about eleven PM, maybe twelve AM again, you know, um and stuff like that. So that's a lot of waking time that that I'm that I'm that I'm there, right? And then, if you think about all that, if you think out of all those hours, right? You know, there's probably a good hour or two of where just random stuff like happen, you know, like comes into my brain that you know, like is just telling of something. What you know, I'm procrastinating because something something's you know got me agitated, or you know, or there's literally something going like like I said the whole thing about like randomly getting hit by a car, stuff like you know stuff like that, you know like, you know like it's not it, it's a small chunk of time in my waking time, but it it takes up a big space you know in my head. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that because you wanted to talk about a way that you not manage but like how you deal when you're anxious is that you procrastinate that's your coping. Well, I don't know if you want that to call it coping, re- but... that. Honestly, I feel like it is because, like, okay, like you guys are probably gonna hate me when I say this, but um, uh, but but we, but but the three of us, like, we are we are in like different Discord groups together. We were in we're we're in at least two different group chats, you know, um, you know, for text messaging and stuff like that. And there are some times when when this phone goes off and it's a text message, I am dreading looking at it. And it's mm. and and you know, like, it, and you know, the, the sad part is, like, I'm dreading looking at it. And it's not so much because, like, you know, like, I'm being held accountable for something. I just, it's one of those, I don't know what I'm about to see when I open it up. <laughs> you know? And like I said, it's no offense to you guys, because it doesn't, because it's not, it's not just y'all's text messages, or it's not just y'all's phone calls and stuff like that. If this phone, if this phone goes off and I'm not prepared for it, like, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know? And it's, and it's, and it's insane, you know? Um I don't I, so sometimes I actually put off like looking at my notifications which is funny <laughs> because people cuz people tell me like you're always on your phone like no the fuck I'm not cuz I can tell you when I am definitely not on that damn phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean we're <laughs> to that point we're in so many like group messages across like multiple different platforms that like you know for us I just I today earlier today I was just like you know what I I'm so I've muted all Discord notifications. I've muted all Twitter notifications, and I've muted all Facebook messaging notifications on my phone because it's so many people are messaging, and about ninety percent of the time it's not for me. Mm, <laughs> and so yeah, I was like, "Yeah, the, the quickest way to get a hold of you guys is to text you now, right?" Yeah, I mean, true. That's and actually, you know what? We're not going to talk about it tonight. But like, I woke up yesterday's morning to the whole bullshit about the Supreme Court, and mm-hmm. that t- that sent me on a tailspin. And and the crazy part is, is like, I'm not the actual demographic that this whole thing affects. Like, yeah, I can be affected by what's going on with the Supreme Court, but not on the level that it's actually going to affect people. That's the only thing I'm going to say about it because we're going to we're actually going to save that topic for 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 next time. I find it interesting that you kind of procrastinate and avoid notifications, stuff like that. For me, it's kind of, it's the opposite. Like if there's a possibility, something's going wrong. Like I need to know, tell me right now. And I want to solve it immediately, which is mm. a big problem. Cause 99% of the time you cannot do those things. Like yeah. when someone says, Hey, do you have free time? I'd like to talk to you later. And that's like the worst thing you could do to me. Cause I'm like, 
what the fuck you need to tell me? Why can't you tell me now? Just tell me the fuck now. What happened? Yeah. And it doesn't. It, it doesn't. Ma- it doesn't matter. It can be like, oh, it's nothing bad. You know, it'd be like, I just want to talk to you later about something. And it's like, I'm, I'm like, you might as well just tell me the whole world's coming to a fucking end. You know, like it's not gonna, it's not gonna change the anxiety level. The fact that you need to talk to me later. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good times. It's not that the state of the world is, you know helping right see that that too that too like y'all y'all have kids how'd y'all do it <laughs> well Laurent, let me no, 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 no 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 i don't i don't need the anatomy <laughs> lesson i don't need the anatomy lesson i mean i meant i mean you, you know what i mean you know what i mean like i mean look at look at all the bullshit that's happening right now in the world I... like we got we got people that are going crazy with the laws of our land and stuff like that we got people who are fucking setting the world on fire by just being negligent about shit we have we have a we have a we have we have a, we have, we have a fucking country invading another sovereign state just because they can thank god they're not winning but just because they can they're doing it you know and stuff like that we have so much shit going on and it's like it's like man like you know, I know i'm happy that I'm, is... I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you guys are 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 actually able to like want to pass your genes along because it, it scares me sometimes <laughs> well i mine well mine was not a on purpose passing along of the genes but because i made the choice to go through with it. Um, I know this is kind of like selling yourself a lie type scenario, but every time that anxiety rears its ugly head, like, oh my gosh, I gave birth to this amazing child and he has to grow up to a world that's probably worse and who knows the world might end tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. I try to like tell myself, you know, the world's been burning since what's, what's Billy Joel's Yes. Um, the world's been burning. The world's been burning since. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> right, and I mean, like, oh, the fire has been burning since the world it, was turning. <laughs> right, and like, obviously, it's more dangerous now because I feel like the, the tools we have are much more destructive and and whatever. Yeah. But I still tell myself, like, you know what? Sh- there's just depending on the decade, depending on the generation, shit's been going on, and that's kind of like what I use to quote unquote comfort myself the best way possible when I think about my son growing up. Yeah. You know what's crazy though? Like the like that hopeless optimist in me is thinking that possibly one of y'all's children are gonna be the people that fucking fix it. I hope so. I know it ain't me. I I, I just I feel like I yeah, I feel like <clears throat> I feel like that ship is passed you for, yeah. for me. You know, like I like I said, I'm closer to fifty than I am to fifteen. So, you know, like I feel like that ship I mean, I'm not saying that I can't make a change, you know, in the world or whatnot, but I don't know. Like I feel like I feel like when you look at my skin color and stuff like that, I, my, the 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 change I could make is probably as a fucking martyr, and that's also scary. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Unless unless world changing involves peanut butter, I don't see my daughter really you know, <laughs> changing the world. No, I'm just kidding. Never, she can do it. She can do it. Hey, hey, she, hey, your daughter could be the next Greta Thunberg or RBG or who else we got? Uh, shit, we have, we have a lot. Hell, like shit, like I know, I know people look at her as the enemy, but she might be the next Hillary Clinton. Who knows? I feel she like my be... son's gonna be like the next Greta, except hopefully he'll <laughs> smile a bit more. But he's always like schooling me about the environment and and i'm fostering it obviously like i'm the one that's putting it in his mind but like he's like really anal about it he's like you know the world's not gonna be here we're all gonna die if we don't take care of the planet and i'm like true <laughs> <laughs> i didn't really speak like that as a kid but true so i'm glad you're glad you're doing that i'm i'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh okay so um I think I told you guys back on the very first episode of After Dark that uh, my boyfriend and I started watching this show called In Treatment, and um, it basically follows like you know, the the day to day the day to day of a of a of a psychologist of psych psychologist psychiatrist I think I'm gonna call it psychologist, um, and um, and it tracks her with three different tracks her with three different patients, um, and then there's the and then there's one episode a week. There's one episode of those weeks that's dedicated to her because, like, every therapist apparently has their own therapist that they have to, like, talk to, like, get all this stuff, like, sorted out. Um, so she had a, she had a, uh, she has a, she has a patient 
and now this patient is like a, is like is 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 a millennial and like man like one of the episodes like she unloaded on like all the previous generations like gen gen y gen z gen x which is me boomers not stuff and man she's and man this this character said some shit that like that like triggered the fuck out of me to where like if i hear her say another thing i'm done watching this show um because uh basically basically uh she said that um that gen x sat there and did nothing and 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 you know like it basically ran over generations y and z and stuff like that you know and it's like no like gen x didn't really do gen x didn't like sit back and do nothing gen x did what the boomers told us which was like do this get this done like the world's going to be a wonderful place for you and stuff like that go to college do this you know get promoted all that stuff you know you know like shit you know and you know yeah like I feel like Gen X is just as woke as as Y, Z, and the Millennials and stuff like that. You know, it's just the fact that you know, like we weren't as prepared as like these newer generations are about this stuff. The fact that your kid is telling you about stuff like this, yeah, like these these kids now are they they've got their shit together, or I hope they do. You know, which is great, but I'm not gonna let him like just bitch about every other generation before us. I'm like, just. Let's just focus on what now. you can do right now. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. I went on a little tangent there. <laughs> but yeah, like I don't know, like that that's another thing I deal with. <laughs> hey, anxiety comes in all ways, shapes, or forms. Corey mentioned the mortality thing. Mm-hmm. Dude, I've been thinking about death a lot and I'm like, I don't know if I have grasp or really I don't know. I'm not okay with the thought of, you know, what's really funny. The thing about the thing that gives me the anxiety most about dying for me personally is what pain am I going to go through as I die? <laughs> am I going to have a slow, painful death or is it going to be quick and I won't see it? I don't it's know like, why. Maybe it's, it's like the final a, destination thing. Oh but. man. It's like a, what is it? It's like that, which was the second Aladdin movie. You'd be surprised what you can live through. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I don't know. Obviously, Ah. my life has taken on actual meaning now that I have a kid. I'm like, Mm -hmm. will I die before he is independent? And oh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I've, yeah. I mean, I think about that all the time, too. Is like, (laughs) where would I be or what would I be doing without my wife or my kids? You know? I was like I don't know I've <laughs> it's scary to think about but like I like before them I thought about things a lot like not being here <laughs> you know like I don't know it's just yeah. One thing I, I want to practice to help with my anxiety, and I, I have to sit, frame it in this way because I can never, I would never be able to have the right to tell you guys to try it if I can't even master it, is mindfulness. Because apparently that's a really great way to, like a great tool for anxiety, but I struggle with stuff like mindfulness and meditation a lot. Mm-hmm. I struggle heavily. Yeah. Do you anybody, either of you just like cry sometimes? <laughs> yeah, just I cry. Like... Some, I, I cry at some really inopportune times. You know, and the sad part is, is I'm not even crying. Sometimes I cry for shit that doesn't even affect me. Like you know, like it's it's weird. It's, yeah. it's weird, and it's another one of those. It's another one of those situations where when I catch myself doing it, I'm like, why the fuck am I doing this? And and like, when did I become this person? You know, like it goes back to like the whole like I've always been. I've always been able to keep my emotions in check, and now I can't. You know, that dam is broken, my friend. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And and you see the and you see the scary part about that is is now I buy into that whole like somebody will weaponize it against me. You know, like somebody would be like, oh, you remember that time you're being a little bitch because you saw you saw a cat cross the street and almost get hit, right? You know, stuff like that. You know. Yeah. Well, it's 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 why I mean that's why I won't get a dog. You know. 
because I I know there's an expiration date on it, and just thinking about that makes me sad, yeah. and I don't yeah. want to go through it again. You know. Oh, my I mean wife's cat on the other hand, it's, it's still alive. I know I'm obviously not a man, um, or you know, but my 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 dad raised me i don't know if it's like a martial arts thing i don't know to suck it up and be tough Mm -hmm. so i did get kind of in a sense i kind of like it like the like it's wasn't specific to gender i guess just not that it was a good thing yeah just suck it up be tough don't wear your emotions on your sleeve don't be weak Mm -hmm. i think it was kind of like trying to prevent the stereotypical cis female like don't be like those Mm -hmm whiny crybaby sissy girls like be tough yeah which yeah in one hand like i appreciate it perhaps he went pushed it a little too far sometimes i do appreciate it but uh i started crying a shit ton after i had my kid i don't know if it's a hormone thing or a life change thing because i've long since given birth my hormones are settled and i still cry at a drop of a hat but before that couldn't cry so i didn't cry probably the only time i ever cried pre giving birth to my child was like when my Nana passed away and when Mufasa died on the Lion King and that was it. Um, but now I'm telling you the thing, like just a, the thought of a sadness is just tears come yeah. out. Um, yeah. But I do feel that, but I, I don't know about why not before, but I know that crying is a way for your body to physically release some sort of anguish that you're experiencing so when i do cry now with that education i'm like you know what this is a process that your body goes through so just let it happen Mm -hmm. maybe let it happen as quickly as possible and then just get over it but the shitty part about crying is you feel so fucking exhausted when you're done oh yeah 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 so if if anyone uses that against you guys tell me and i will drive over there and fucking shove a foot up that person's ass thank you thank you <laughs> and then they'll be embarrassed because they got beaten up by a girl <laughs> yeah so Corey, i you know i hope you can find a means to cope or either yeah. take a break or get when I say get help, not like, dude, you need help. I meant like literal help. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm just like, I mean, even like right now I'm anxious of like, well, after this, like I have to like edit the shows and let them process overnight so I can upload them. Like that's literally the next, that's, I, I'm not even like, I don't want to say I'm checked out of this show, but like I'm thinking about, the next thing the next thing and then the next thing and then the next thing and that gives me great anxiety as well for some reason there's always the next thing there's no like yeah do you you write out a to-do list i do okay never mind that's the one daily that's the one thing that's the one thing i cannot see the master like i like I know I have all these tasks to do, and I just never write a list. I, I get, I, I guess the fact, I guess if I see the list, then it just becomes even more daunting. Mm-hmm. I think that's the only reason why, because like you know, like I, 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 I wake up in the morning, I know what I have to do, I know what I have to do, and you know, so I go through the day, and then you know, like I get, I get in the bed at night, and like you know, like you know that moment you drift off to sleep, and then your eyes pop open, you're wide awake again, because like oh fuck, I forgot something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's me. That's me. But you know, it's like, but now it's like, it's like, the 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 King Kong on top of the Empire State Building for me is actually having the list in front of me <laughs> to do. Yeah, and it it's like, I'm at the point where like I don't really know what else to say about it. I just, I just I don't tell anybody. <laughs> Because I don't know, it's like not worth telling people sometimes about all this, and like this is just like a space where we kind of do talk about these things. I hope it helps. Yeah. 
I mean, it, yeah, it, it does, but at the same time, it's like, well, is it helping? And I don't know, to be honest, if it is or not. But I guess just saying words and say like saying it out loud helps a little bit, you know. But yeah, at least you're in a safe space. We're not going to tell you, hey, man, shut up, stop complaining. Life, you know, life could be worse because we'll never. Yeah, that. yeah. What type of asshole would I be? <laughs> not when Big I have my one. own shit that I'm dealing with. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, well, well. Before we get to a, another level of expressing our feelings, to where we have to start eating our feelings. Oh gosh! Don't get me started on that. That's how I cope: was eat. Yeah. That's me too. That's emotional <laughs> eating. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Same. Yep. All right. Well, everybody, this has been Boss Rush After Dark, the alternative podcast of the flagship show for the Boss Rush Network. Uh, we'd like to go ahead and thank you all for tuning in and listening to the show uh of course all of our patrons uh thank you we appreciate you we love you uh definitely do not take you guys for granted let's put it that way uh before we head out here's how you can get uh get in contact with and stay in touch with the crew uh stephanie you're you're up first Thanks. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Klimov, K-L-I-M-O-V underscore author. Articles on BossRush.net, uh, Wednesday nights on the Boss Rush podcast, and on the Disney arm of Standard Definition. All right. Corey? You can find me at I am Corey in HD on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me hosting the Boss Rush podcast, Nintendo Power Block, Standard Definition, and of course, right here. All right. And I'm going to keep it short and sweet tonight. You can catch me. Just look me up everywhere that you can think I could be at. Exodus803. So social media, YouTube, Twitch, various different gaming gaming sites, stuff like that. Just look for me there. All right. Come back and join us for our next installment of Boss Rush After Dark, where we will always be back with more topics that aren't always content appropriate for our other, flag, our, our other anchor shows. And uh, as always... Have a good night. Be we safe out there. We love you. And give yourself your due diligence of self-care. Mm-hmm. It'll do you a world of good. Have a good night, everyone.